so crowd. fuck. But yeah, I noticed that like the tendency among the younger crowd was like, we're taking shots, so I'll take one shot, two shot. Mm-hmm. Okay, I'm gonna hang out. And then next thing you know, <laughs> they're kind of you know on that next level, and they're mm-hmm. they're sipping white claws and all this bullshit. Meanwhile, yeah. me, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna take half a shot, half a shot, yeah, half a shot, half a shot, another half a shot. Like I can last <laughs> a little longer. Patience. But, so, yeah, I mean that's but see, but see, that's the thing though, is that like people think like, oh, just because they're 18, 19, or you know, even younger than that, that like, oh, I'm young and I have a lot of vitality and shit, and I can just sleep it off. You're not really sleeping it off. It doesn't, you know, what I'm saying being getting hungover drunk is not fun or productive or exciting for anybody. Yeah, yeah it's yeah, it's yeah, you're you come you're you're um you come back a little bit better when you're younger, but you're still having to come back from poisoning your fucking self. Yeah. You know, so it's like it's so it's like, and all you did was you got you couldn't remember what the hell you did. You lost your keys. You may have pissed or shitted on yourself or vomited on yourself. You know, <laughs> it's like what's the it's like where's the fun? And to me, I'm like I'm just like where's the fun? Where's the enjoyment? Yeah. You know? For me, the fun is like smelling it, sipping it, <laughs> tasting it. You know, when you take a fat shot, you don't you don't smell it or or taste it. You don't mm. enjoy it. You're just like, how much can I keep down without vomiting? Right. Yeah. Oh God. The um, what's that challenge? I don't know if it's the 21 shot challenge that people do for the 21st. That's exactly what it sounds like. That's too much. Uh, yeah. I'm just like, I'm just like, you're gonna kill yourself. <laughs> it's just, you could literally die. You could literally die. And even if you don't die, you're just gonna like. See, that's the thing, is that um, I've only been... What'd you say? You're not going to remember it. You're not going to remember it. You know what I'm saying? You're going to make yourself sick. Uh, you're going to take a day or two to recover. And, um, you know, yeah, I mean, to me, the best times that I had were not even... After a while, I couldn't even, I couldn't even just, like, get smoked up and go out. Because after a while, like you deplete your serotonin and dopamine, like you tap those you know, parts of yourself too much and then you just become lethargic and kind of like a zombie, you get fried. To me, yeah. the best times, to me, some of the best times that I had was when I would take uh, mushrooms or acid because those things, they hype you up, right? And then if you do want to drink or smoke some weed or whatever, it doesn't completely bring you down. It doesn't mean, as a matter of fact, you probably want to smoke at some point before you reach your peak and whatnot, just so it doesn't become, you don't have a, like a bad trip or start like getting over anxious. And yeah, then it's the like, coming. yeah, the coming, yeah, exactly. Well, before, well, the, um, we don't know before the peak, like as you start to feel like your skin's really tingling and you feel real flush and hot and everything, like before, like when you start to first feel that coming on, because to me, that was the point when I realized like, oh, I could, it could go, it could go left. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just because you're just super hyper aware and sense your senses are just overstimulated and shit. So it's like a little bit of weed or whatever helps like bring it down for me. And then it was like, I would want to dance. I'm in my best mood. So like, even if somebody brushes me off or whatever, I'm not taking it personal. I'm not getting in my head about it. I'm not getting overly self-conscious about it. And um, yeah, it was, it was cool. Let's explore this for a second because yeah, I remember I brought this up to my old roommate and I was like, you know, casually mentioning like, oh, you know how like when you, when you're high or when you're whatever on something, then you smoke and it kind of helps you level out. And he was like, yeah, what? and he was like, I don't get that. What do you mean? You smoke more and you get less high. And he like thought that was like a weird concept. I was like, well, but it's because you're, I, I'm not a scientist, but mm-hmm. from what I've heard, it's like your, your serotonin or your dopamine receptors, whatever are kind of overloaded. Mm-hmm. So if you smoke, it's going to um, kind of bring your, get your body to that point where it's got to go the other way. Um, right. It's probably a really shitty, stupid way to explain it, but mm-hmm. he was more like anytime if I'm stoned or faded or if I've taken Molly or some shit, if I smoke, I just get more high. Mm-hmm. But I was like, I don't know. I feel like you, you affirmed what I was trying to say. I don't know. Yeah. Well, no, I mean, it's, it's just a different thing. Cause like, you know, weed, cause, cause that's the thing, right. Is that, you know, yeah, dopamine and serotonin are part of the processes, but it's like psychedelics 
have a completely different effect than, you know, saying smoking cannabis, which even if you're smoking a sativa, um, after that, after those initial like 15, 20 or 30 minutes of like feeling a bit of a rush or whatever, it starts to all have the same effect of giving you like that kind of relaxed, you know, laid back, you know, chill vibe. Whereas psychedelics, it's going to give you, it's going to get you hyped up. You know, yeah. so you're going to be turned up. So it's, it's just a means of helping to balance it out. You know, saying so that way you don't, so that way you actually can can continue to enjoy it. Otherwise, otherwise your senses are just so overstimulated. You're just so busy, distracted by all the different sounds and colors and and the way everything feels that you actually can't just like enjoy the moment. So yeah, Cam brought up Fireball. I don't know. I was never into Fireball. Fireball is a little too much for me. I've had it a couple times. I mean, it's whatever. I'm just like. It's it's just another it's just another um, mainstream like you said like at first you were talking about like shots like oh it's too childish and I get what you're saying like to me fireball comes off as childish because that's the thing that like everybody once they go, get off to college and they get off you know what I'm saying five minutes away from their parents and shit Ooh, let's get some fucked up let's get some fireball you know what I'm saying and it's just like just like you pieces of shit don't even know how to get the fucked up is a whole other level say that again. Moonshine is a whole other level. Oh, pfft, but dude, moonshine, pfft, dude, I've had so like the moonshine that they sell retail is will fuck you up enough. But I've had I've had moonshine like motherfuckers actually made, and that stuff is like no joke. You think that it's something you're supposed to actually put into your goddamn car to com- in a combustible engine? Yeah, like it, it, it you're just like yeah, it's like this is not even enjoyable. It's like this literally tastes like I'm drinking a bottle of rum and alcohol. Yeah. It, it's like this is not. I've never had it myself. You're not missing out on shit. Sh- you're not missing out on the damn thing. You're you're better off. This is a case. This is a case where just going with the mainstream big box, uh, thing is worth it because the other thing about like the history of um, of bootlegging, right, is that it was in places. It was you know places where liquor was you know, illegal, and, and it was and it was punished in the same way that, like, marijuana is today, yeah. um, is that because these processes were not uh, standardized and there was no, like, health and safety checks and shit, there were people that were getting poisoned from it and dying. You know what I'm saying? They're just getting sick because everybody's just making their own shit in a bathtub or whatever the fuck. And inevitably, when you have something like that and something that's so sensitive people consume, you're gonna have like deaths and illnesses and people. I think I think there's been cases of people going blind and shit from it. Yeah, it's like um, it's like when people have concentrates, like wax concentrates. Mm. The reason hash and anything above hash exists is because you know the reason hash is so prevalent in Europe is because you can't get caught with the flower, the the herb. Right. So right. You have it in a form that where you can use less of it, get more stone. And if you're caught with it, maybe you can, you know, get rid of it eat more easily. Mm-hmm. Um, but um, yeah, like hash was really big. Like the beetles were in the hash. Oh, yeah. It was so illegal for them to just have a goddamn flower on them mm-hmm. that John Lennon had to, you know, or, or look at Jim Morrison when he was traveling in, in uh, I guess it was Amsterdam. Mm. He uh, he got caught with a ball of hash, and he mm. ate that like Juice World. Oh wow! And, uh, next thing you know, he's luckily he didn't die from that. He died later, but Juice World got caught with some other level of you know pills and yeah, he got caught with a bunch of he got he got caught with a bunch of with a bunch of opiate pills basically. Yeah, um, I, and then he had like um, cardiac arrest. Yeah, he OD'd because he, he, yeah, he ate too much. I mean, it's like, nigga, you got money, you're famous, just fight the fucking case. And plus, like, when you at that level, you're supposed to have somebody that's willing to take the fall for you or willing to carry your guns and shit like that. I mean, just explicitly, like, you know, whatever. I mean, it's 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 fucked. It's it's sucked and everything, but it's just like, you know, this is also what happens when people who aren't really built, who who people who take on too many risks, then they're prepared to actually deal with. You know what I'm saying? Like, that Juice World was trying to get off the plane and go through customs and maybe get his stomach pumped or some shit. And he got caught up in all the red tape. 
and I don't I mean, know you if have it's true or not, but su- supposedly he would have had a way out of that dilemma mm-hmm. had it not been a legal matter, you know, like because he knew he knew he'd consumed too much. But but I mean, but that's the thing though. The thing is, is that like it's not as if he had just gotten famous the day before. I mean, dude had been famous for a minute. He you know he should have either had somebody next to him giving him advice or he should have been able to pick up on like oh shit that like you know that that i know what i'm doing and that i know that there might be a price to pay for this stuff. Like, it's not as if you just do that shit and then all of a sudden you just realize like oh i might get stopped by the police or they might have dogs and there might be board there might be the um customs we have to deal with it's like nigga you're an international you know saying roaming star you've dealt with this before to different degrees you know hell future what 21 22 yeah i mean he's i mean he's young i mean i I don't know at a certain point i'm like i mean some people will be like oh you're blaming the victim and everything but it's like you know we also got to folk you know realize when some wounds are self-inflicted he victimized himself yeah it's like sometimes you victimize yourself you know you take on to you know yeah sometimes you victimize yourself simple as that but um but yeah the drugs man the drug the drugs is why the hashish yeah, that's um, you know, it's like those those moments like they breed des you know what is it desperation breeds creativity or whatever, um, because I'm kind of jealous because the thing is smoking flour really is a really inefficient way of of consuming it and 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 enjoying it. Yeah. Um, you know, hashish is 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 much better. Although now I'm st- I've become more skeptical of just how strong some of the concentrates in forms that people are taking in cannabis. I'm like, at a certain point, it's like, I'm, I'm, I'm like, you might as well just be taking heroin. Like, as high as you're getting off of weed. Yeah. You know, like some people really just put themselves into like a comatose state and where they just become immobilized. And it's just like, again, it's like the same thing with the alcohol. It's like, you're so fucked up. You're not really enjoying it. You're just kind of like stuck in place. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I I feel lucky in some ways to have found that sweet spot where I can sip a little bit of each of these and still have a conversation. Mm-hmm. But I mean, I'm Mexican and Irish. Like we're built from a different stock in some ways. I mean, some. I mean, sure, some of y'all are. I guess <laughs> not everybody. <laughs> yeah. Also. Yeah. I went- I went four years without drinking, so mm. I, I, you know, I've had the or I've seen the best of both sides, the best of both worlds. And when I, when I finally felt comfortable partaking again, I just kind of, I knew that it would be different. Like it wouldn't be, you know, well before I, I don't think that I had so much of a problem, so much as it was just too prevalent all around me like uh making music and being in in a band and being in different Mm. bands where we were drinking every practice session every show and every this and every that and after a while it just kind of gets old Mm -hmm. but also i was kind of like band manager like i was like the the designated driver Mm -hmm. so i couldn't really be drinking and then yeah eventually later that band went its natural course and then I find myself at the point where it's like, well, I'd like to have a, a beer with my family every now and again, or, you know, the, the one of the most recent things that I did was like, I think I might've mentioned this to you. Uh, I was watching a bunch of fucking Westerns with my, my, with my family, like my dad and, mm-hmm. and my uncle and, and that sort of thing. And my brother we were smoking cigars, drinking whiskey and watching the good, the bad and the ugly. And man, that, was a spiritual experience for me, you know? Mm. As lame as that may sound to, to, to the layman. <laughs> not, the, not the fine connoisseur, the enlightened uh, uh, partaker of fine, you know, cigars and, and you know, <laughs> classic film. Yeah. As yourself, Dr. Ace Woe. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, honestly, like, you watch a good movie, you smoke a fine cigar, and you drink some whiskey, and it really mm. is. There's something. There's something else about it. You're not. You know what I mean. It takes each experience to the next level. 